The black community is officially done with the pro-Palestine movement. Bro, I don't care. I'm not trying to diss you. I'm letting you know you that I did not know you existed. Yeah, I did. In this video, I'm going to expose the true foundations of the pro-Palestine movement. Let's go back to the beginning of this somewhat long but truly short episode of the woke since October 7th. Not even one day in, masses of groups of people from across the world decided to stand with Palestine and the people of Gaza and with the movement against the state of Israel. All doing so the day the state of Israel got attacked by Hamas. Make sense of that. What we as a world saw unfold so quickly is many people, a part of the black community inside the United States, join the pro-Palestine movement. Those who joined began attending protests against Israel. They marched through the streets, attended rallies, many of which turned violent. They took to the internet to escalate waves of intentional and explicit anti-Semitism and Jew hatred. They encouraged and incentivized anti-Jew, anti-Zionist, and anti-Israel rhetoric wherever, whenever. They followed the trend and they chased the clout. This applies for those who joined, not the entire black community, must I clarify. These individuals fell in love with the idea of something to fight for, and they got settled in and it became very real, real quick. But then they realized, wait, these Arabs here in the United States are saying that black people are in the military fighting against other military and they aren't anti-American? How could that be? Black people also wear a uniform and get on a plane and come to our countries and kill us. You vote the same f***ing melanated f***ing people into government that signed papers to kill us. I don't want to hear it anymore. It is August and we are almost 11 months in the middle of this mess between Israel and Palestine. And now there are black people in the United States who are saying that the pro-Palestinian movement does not actually care about the black people who joined them in the first place. Because it is true. During the Black Lives Matter movement, they didn't say anything. During waves which are sadly continuous and ongoing of police brutality and systematic racism against black people in the United States, these pro-Palestinian mobs weren't marching down the street with the black community. What you are seeing is that ultimately, the whole pro-Palestine movement was composed of a lot of hitchhiker, free rider, clout chaser, anti-Semites. And their loyalty was just as consistent as short-term stock market trading. Volatile as f What have you done to change your government? I don't think crying on your phone is an example. What narrative are you pushing by showing black soldiers in the Middle East being told that we should put our issues and lives and rights behind everybody else's, including Palestinians? I don't want to hear y'all tell us to put ourselves last. I'm sick of it. They have been used and have been manipulated by the most racist movement on earth. And now people are finally waking up. But you want to know what is really, really ironic? It is the Arabs that have enslaved millions of Africans. You guys keep bashing white people for slavery. But why don't we ever talk about the Arab slave trade and keep in mind that the Arabs have enslaved more black people than the Europeans combined. Did you know that today in Arabic, the word for black people is abid, which is literally translated to slave. There is a whole neighborhood inside of the Gaza Strip called Al Abid, translated to the neighborhood of slaves. The African Palestinians who now live in two compounds near the Al-Aqsa Mosque have called the area home since 1930. They have experienced prejudice with some Palestinian Arabs, referring to them as slaves, Abid, and to their neighborhood as the quote, slaves prison, the Al Abid. Black Americans are being attacked by the pro-Palestinian movement for their stance on domestic issues here in the United States. All eyes on, no, no, no. It sounds like all eyes on just pro-Palestinians. You know what, at this point, I will happily take it out of my bio because if that's really how y'all feel as if Donald Trump gives a damn about Palestine, fine, I will take it out of my bio. I will never speak about it ever again. Trust me, I will never speak about it again. They are literally being told to take down the Palestinian flag from their Instagram bio. This racist pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas movement are telling black people in the United States to take all of their own baggage, all of their own issues and stow those away to the side as if they are somehow less important to put all of their life and full efforts just for the Palestinians while neglecting their own suffering. Make sense of that. You can't. 
This video, coupled with all of the other Palestinians and their disrespectful and denigrating videos towards people like me, I'm done. So the money that was coming out of my bank account every month to help Palestinians over in Gaza, yeah, that's going to stop. And I'm going to redirect those funds to help the people over in Congo. This is happening for real. Like, for real, for real. I have been saying this since October, people. Go back to my first set of videos when this whole thing started in my live streams, when I said that this was inevitable, that this was going to happen. When people feel like they have to hop on a bandwagon because their friends, their family, their neighbors, their classmates, their coworkers, and whoever else are hopping on that bandwagon too. Once the logic kicks in, the dopamine subsides, and they see things for how they truly are, they realize that this bandwagon the entire time was looking for short-term benefit, period. And like what's even crazier is that earlier people were like, oh, these are bots, these are bots, these are bots. No, this is how people really feel. And she made a video. That's a real human being that feels exactly that way. These aren't bots. These are people that feel like they are entitled to the support of black people no matter what. That they get to push us around and tell us who the hell we get to vote for if we support them. As if that means we're supposed to just not give a damn about ourselves in order to show our allegiance to supporting them. They've lost, they've lost their minds. The pro-Palestinian model for a freedom fight has never been sustainable. You know what is sustainable? Developing a real relationship with other people. Being an ally, meaning you are there for one another consistently. It's a two-way street, not a one-way. We tried to tell you, I tried to tell you. I tried to tell every single person, not just the black community, that they are fighting for the team that doesn't actually have their community's best interests at heart. Whether you are gay or black, for example, that is the bottom line and you know what is coming next? You know what community is next to splinter off from this pro-Palestinian movement? The LGBTQ community. There are still literally members of the LGBTQ community holding signs that say queers for Gaza. And when you go up to them and you ask them if they know what would happen if they stepped foot into the Gaza Strip, they immediately say that this whole thing is about Palestinian rights, Palestinian life, the kids and the women and the children. So for them, it's not actually even about being gay, for example. But when they return to reality and soon realize that if they themselves stepped foot into the Gaza Strip, they would get butchered and beheaded with a machete. And just like we are now seeing that the pro-Palestinian movement didn't actually care about the black community in the United States, we are shortly going to see that the same pro-Palestinian movement doesn't care about the LGBTQ community either. So now, what? The point is, honestly, I've been saying this for near a year already. Lots of people who claim they do don't actually care about Palestinians. I am a Zionist. I support Israel's right to defend itself and for Jewish people to have a home to themselves. But I am also at the same time able to acknowledge the suffering on both sides. And I actively talk about how the kids and the women inside of the Gaza Strip are oppressed by Hamas and that we as a society must do something to remove Hamas so that those kids and women and children aren't oppressed. I don't hear these woke people talking about that. I don't see them really truly caring about the Palestinian people. So I myself, as a Zionist, care more about those Palestinians than they do. Let that sink in. Me personally, I have never endured racial discrimination on the basis of me being a visible minority. So I cannot really be arrogant enough to tell you what to say, how to feel, or God forbid who to vote for for the next president of the United States. However, the truth is, I have felt discrimination as being part of an ethnic minority by being a Jew, a group of people that were too enslaved, persecuted, displaced, and kicked out of their indigenous homeland. The Jewish and black communities have so much more in common than with this racist pro-Palestinian movement who have nothing but their own interests in mind. So to the black community in the United States of America, here is a reminder. Jews never hijacked and appropriated the struggles that we are aware of and continue to acknowledge and know that you deal with and help advocate for and fight against regularly. In 1909, a group of Jewish activists such as Julius Rosenthal, Lillian Wald, Rabbi Emil Hirsch, and others formed the NAACP, National Association for the Advancement of colored people. And they did so along with African-American activists such as W.E.B. Du Bois, Ida B. Wells, and more. 50% of the attorneys during the civil rights movement in the 1960s in the South 
were Jewish. Jewish people accounted for more than 50% of the white people who challenged the Jim Crow laws in Mississippi. Many Jews with a shared history of persecution themselves identified with the struggles of African Americans and they were motivated by a commitment to social justice. Figures like Rabbi Abraham Joshua Herschel marched alongside Martin Luther King Jr. across the Selma Bridge in 1965. And guess what? I am one of those who have committed themselves to. In 2018, my family went down to the South to go visit Atlanta, Birmingham, Selma, and Montgomery to learn more about and visit the actual sites from the Civil Rights Movement. I went to Freedom Park, the 16th Street Baptist Church, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, the Rosa Parks Museum, the Equal Justice Museum, the Freedom Riders exhibit, and I walked across the Selma Bridge in Selma, Alabama. I spent the day with Joanne Bland, who is an American civil rights activist who crossed the bridge, the Selma Bridge, with people like John Lewis and Barack Obama. So ask yourself, where does this determination, where does this passion come from? It comes from being a person who has the authority to speak on behalf of lived experiences. Oh, and I happen to be Jewish, Israeli, and a Zionist. How about that? Truthfully, I am actually right now glad to see that there are many people within the black community in the United States who are starting to see those who they were trying to be woke with. Unfortunately, it did take this long, almost a year. But right now, it is starting to help the world see what this racist movement for what it actually is. And this is just the first of many groups realizing what a mistake they made from being these wannabe freedom fighters themselves. And what have I been saying since the beginning of this? The truth always wins and the truth is starting to shine.